this morning about that particular passage. Um, so let's get our Bibles open back up. Matthew chapter 6 is where we were. Right, we're leading us in that particular passage. So great verses there and a basic understanding, if you will, of the direction that we need to go in. I got it, Brother Brian. We work together. We'll be successful together. <laughs> Neither one of us can be successful by ourselves, but together we can make it happen. All right, so uh, we're talking about this topic of provision, Matthew chapter number 6, great passage of Scripture. Let's look back through these verses, and let's kind of slow down a little bit. Let's think about what we're reading. Follow along in your copy of the Word of God, Matthew chapter number 6. Verse number 25, therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body, what ye shall put on, is not the life more than meat, and the body than raiment. Let it sink in, think about it. Verse 26, behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Which of you, verse 27, uh, by taking thought can add one cubit unto his stature? Verse 28. And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothe the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Look at the question mark there. We often think of that as an emphatic statement when it's not. It is a question. Verse 31. Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow. For the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Great verbiage here in Matthew, as Matthew basically tells us, when it comes to the things that you need. Now there's obviously there's speech and there's talking in regards to the things that we eat or the things that we drink or the things that we wear, the clothes that we put on. The idea is, obviously not that you shouldn't think about what you're wearing. I hope when you got up this morning you thought about it and you matched your tie with your uh, coat and your pants, man. And uh, ladies, I'm assuming that you match your shoes with your dresses or skirts or your outfits. Or, so we do actually put thought into it. But the idea here is, what the scripture is teaching us is, that we ought not worry about whether or not we're going to have these things. Because it is, in essence, God who is going to take care of us, right? It is God who is going to give us that food. It's God who's going to give us that drink. It's God who's going to give us the clothes on our back, the roof over our head. You could go on and on uh, in regards to what we're discussing here. But when we think about this, we started off, as we've already mentioned, but week one, we said we should be grateful uh, for our salvation. There is nothing in the world that is more important to us as a Christian than that of our salvation. There is not a home in heaven uh, without salvation. There is no eternity that is happy and that is joyful if it's not for our salvation. We must learn to be grateful and count our blessings when it comes to this idea of salvation. Then last week we talked about relationships. Relationships are such an avid part of life and we need to understand that those relationships, at least the positive relationships, those are things that have been given to us by God. And we therefore should be thankful to Him for what He has done for us. And then we move into the third topic this morning, and that is the topic of provision. We must understand the provisions that God gives to us. What is it in your life that God is providing for you? 
What is it that he's affording to you? What is it that uh, you have received simply because of the blessings of God? There are many things that we encounter. We must recognize God's faithfulness as he provides for us in our lives. Jesus taught us to trust in his care, reminding us that our Heavenly Father knows what we need before we ask. We focus on learning to live with contentment, knowing that God is always providing, whether spiritually or emotionally or materially, uh, physical, all of the aspects of life, God has the ability to provide. As we learn to count our blessings, we acknowledge that everything we have is a result of God's provision and God's grace. I want you to keep your finger in Matthew chapter number 6, if you would. But I also want you to turn over to Philippians chapter number 4. A very familiar passage of Scripture. If we have not done so already, I would encourage you to take some time to underscore uh, or to highlight the verbiage here in this passage of Scripture. Philippians chapter 4 and verse number 19, the Bible simply says, But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. A lot of times we are on the wrong track, so to speak, in this idea of what we need versus what we want. A lot of times we look at things and we say, well, God, this is something that I needed and I haven't received it and you haven't given it to me. But I think we need to go back and we need to reassess the things that we know. It's not new stuff here, okay? Uh, the Bible says that even though there are things that you uh, would pray for and you would expect to receive those, you must reevaluate how you're going about requesting those things. Because the Bible says if you request those things uh, to get them for your own lust, then you're not going to get them. God's not giving you that. So it's not just a carte blanche. If you want something, then you ask for it, and then God's going to give it to you. There is also that teaching that we always speak of, and, and I believe there is some great theology to it and, a, and an understanding that we need to strive to get. But I think in a lot of what the Scripture is teaching, I think God is telling us, hey, I want you to understand as well, when it comes to these things that you are asking for, I think God helps us in knowing what to ask. How, how many of you understand the concept that uh, dad has the money and dad wants to take care of the son or the daughter and dad wants to help them and dad wants to try to get them the things that they want. And so dad kind of tries to steer or manipulate the request so as that request can be fulfilled. It's kind of the same concept. God says, I'll give you what you ask for, but you got to ask for the right things. you got to have your mind in the right place. We often say this, you know, if you want the brand new Lamborghini, that is probably not a part of God's will for your life. <laughs> Maybe it is, but I'm just saying, probably not. If you want the $5,000 suit, that, that's probably in this day and age in which we live, that may not be God's will for your life uh, when you can go to the local men's store and you can get a suit for a couple hundred bucks. We must learn to understand what God is trying to accomplish. What is it that God is trying to do for us? What is it that he's trying to lead us in and the direction that he's trying to get? Look at so God is looking to get us from point A to point B. Now, while we travel down that road from point A to point B, there are things that we need to accomplish the task at hand. Well, you don't understand, Pastor, is I really need this. In your mind, you need this. But I'm asking you, according to God's plan, do you need this? Is this a way that God is saying, okay, to get you from point A to point B, you probably have to have these things. You have to have this nourishment. In this day and age in which we live, it would probably be a good 
idea to have clothes. Okay, so there are things that you need. There are things that you have to have. Just because you say you need it doesn't mean that it's a need versus a want. And when we talk about provisions, we're talking about those things that God is giving to us. Those things that God is providing for us. Now, what is he providing? He's providing everything that we need. That's what he said he would give us. That is his verbiage. That is his wording. That is what he said to us. I will provide. Let's look at it again. Are you still there? Philippians 4 and verse number 19. My God shall supply all your need. That's what the Bible says. So from point A to point B, as you journey together with the Lord Jesus Christ, what is it that you need on this journey to help you get to point B? It's almost like the good boss that you work for who says, in trying to accomplish the task at hand, you let me know what you need and I will get you anything that you need. Uh, first off, boss, I'm going to need a new 1500. I would prefer that it be red and have leather seats. And the boss immediately says, go drive your little Maverick. It'll get you there. Right? Okay, you understand what I'm saying? So it's the same thing with God. The boss is looking at, okay, do you need documentation? Do you need documents? What do you need to get this job accomplished? Do you need me to reach out to somebody because somebody else that you're reaching out to is not giving you what you need? If you will just let me know what you need, I will see to it that you get it. He's not talking about Thanksgiving dinner. Well, it's close to Thanksgiving, boss. If you would buy my Thanksgiving dinner, I think that would get me over everything that I need. That was the only thing left on my list. Okay, the boss was not thinking that. Now, maybe the boss is going to buy you a Thanksgiving dinner. I don't know. Maybe it was a good year. Maybe he's excited about what you're doing. I don't know. But I'm just saying, God is the same way. God is saying, look, here's point A. There's point B. I'm trying to get you somewhere on this journey. So what do you need to be able to get through this journey? To be able to move on this path? Because God said, whatever it is that you need, I'm going to give that to you. I'm going to make sure you have that. I want to do everything I can do in my power, this is God talking, to make sure that you, Brian Bringer, are successful in your Christian life. Same thing as kids. Whatever it is that you need to get from A to B, I want to make sure you have everything you need. It's not wants. It's not a credit card. Where we just say, oh, uh, I'll take that and uh, just, just swipe my credit card from Jesus. That's not the way it works. So when we look at the provisions, we so often are drawn to see those things as so minuscule and petty. But God looks at it and God says, no, I don't want you to see it that way. The way that I want you to see it is that's something you needed to accomplish the task, and I gave it to you. I did exactly what I said I was going to do. I provided for you everything that you needed. But Pastor Ed, I have this bill, and God won't pay it. Okay, God didn't say he was going to pay all your bills. Now, it may be that God sends the check in the mailbox. I was a college student once. I had that happen before. There are times when we fervently pray and we ask God for things and God does special things for us, but that's not a part of what God is saying when he says, I'm going to provide everything that you need on this journey, on this path. I'm going to give you what you need to be successful. Provisions may seem to us as very simple but we must understand that they are necessities in our life. And that is, in essence, what God told us that he was going to give us. 
And what we're looking at doing in these last several weeks and next week as well, we want to make sure that we're counting our blessings, right? That's what we're always talking about. But there's a key word that we've inserted in there. We want in these several weeks and this year along this time, we want to strive to count every blessing. Every blessing. Has God blessed you today? Did God do something for you today? <clears throat> Mr. Nam was talking about driving in Atlanta. I don't blame her. Anybody who drives and drives in Atlanta does not want to drive in Atlanta. There are nuts in Atlanta. There are crazies in Atlanta. Do you see them more prevalent in Atlanta? They're everywhere, but they're really in Atlanta. But God protects us. Ms. Dow told me she prays for me every day. Why? Because you have to get up early and you have to drive in Atlanta. That's God taking care of me. That's provision. That's something I have to do on this journey. And God said, I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to do what needs to be done. What is it that God is doing for you that seems so minuscule? How often do we jump in the truck? Brother Tommy, you drive a lot. Brother Brian, you drive a lot. I drive a lot. I'm on the road a lot. What is it that we see that is a part of our everyday life that we just let it pass by as if it's just supposed to happen that way? When you drive on the road and you look over and you see a car accident, how come that wasn't you? Oh, I know. <laughs> It's because you're never distracted when you drive. <laughs> I saw this reel the other day, and it was this guy who was driving this stick shift, square body, Chevrolet pickup truck, and he was talking about how easy it is to drive because he's never distracted. By the time it was over, he had a cereal bowl on the dash. He had his cup of coffee on the dash. He had two cell phones that he was using at different times, and his laptop was open, sitting on the big seat. All the while, he's shifting gears, driving down the road. And I thought to myself, that's almost not funny. Because I saw a girl doing that yesterday, driving down the interstate. Makeup, coffee. She wasn't shifting gears because everybody knows girls don't know how to drive a stick shift, right? I'm sorry. I just had to say it. How many of you know how to drive a stick shift? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Country people. That's what we are. Anyway, provision. See, God helped you to know how to drive that stick shift. Push that clutch in. To shift those gears. You might grind them, but that's okay. That's all right. You want to let everybody around you know that you're doing it the manual way, right? <laughs> you want to let them know. Provision. God is doing for us what we need Him to do to get through the journey. Right. To move to the next stage. To move to that next phase. And I ask the question again, what is it that you see on a regular basis and you just allow that to pass on by and you don't acknowledge that it's God taking care of you? You don't acknowledge that it's God with his hedge of protection around you because he told you he would take care of everything you need. When we look at God's provision, we, not, we ought not look at it as a minuscule thing. As we count our blessings, we have to look at the provision. As we count every blessing that God is giving to us, we must see the provision. God's faithfulness in providing for us is not something that we should take for granted. Whether he's providing uh, in certain areas of our life, we always must see each individual area where God is reaching out and how God is helping us. And let me give you three thoughts this morning. Let me say this first of all. Number one, God knows our needs and he provides them. I want us to, what we're doing here is we're kind of, we're, we're kind of taking an additional step, if you know what I mean. 
A lot of us look at life and we say, without a doubt, without batting an eye, God knows what I need. Right? Right? I'm a Christian this morning. I'm saved. I'm on my way to heaven. God knows what I need. And then we leave it right there. But I want to ask you the question this morning. I want to go a step further. I want to know, does God know what you need? And if so, does he provide what you need? Because a lot of times we mope around thinking about the things that we don't have when we fail to realize the things that we do have that God has provided for us. God has given us certain things that we needed and it's important for us to see that he knows the need and he provides it. Matthew's account gives a great illustration. He says, take for instance this bird. Okay? He says this bird doesn't plant its food, nor does it harvest its food, nor does it put it up in storage so it can have it later. How does the bird eat? Matthew's account is very clear. Because God knows what the bird needs, and God gives the bird exactly what it needs. Later on in the passage, Matthew says, are we less than the bird? If God's going to do that for the bird, why would he not do that for us? It's not that he doesn't do it. In many cases, it's that we don't acknowledge that he is doing it. We don't look at it the same way. Because Matthew's account is so simple, the bird doesn't plant the food, the bird doesn't harvest the food, the bird doesn't store the food. God gives the bird what the bird needs. He knows what it needs, and he gives it to him. And we look at that and say, but pastor, that's so simple. Are we talking a little berry on a bush? I mean, seriously? We have a way of belittling things and taking away the awesomeness of what God is doing. Have you ever sat at the kitchen table and looked out the window and watched the bird? Maybe it might help you to think about this passage of Scripture. Oh, I know you're in a hurry. I know you're busy. But when you drive by that accident on the road, do you pray for whoever's involved and then immediately thank God that it wasn't you or your family member? You don't know how serious it was. It looks like in many cases just a fender bender. I remember several months ago, I came through on 85 where you split off the of 75 and 85 and right before the airport, so Cleveland Avenue area, Virginia Avenue area, there is a guardrail that comes down the side of the interstate, and I noticed, because I was only going two or three miles an hour with all the traffic, there was a car that was on the wrong side of the guardrail that had gone all the way up the back side of the guardrail and smashed into one of those concrete pylons that holds the bridge together. And I thought to myself, that could have been somebody I know. Because that was not a fender bender. That was serious. Good chance, never heard, Good chance whoever was involved in that didn't make it out alive. Oh, I know what you were doing when you saw it. I gotta get home from work! Let's go! What is the holdup? Come on! Oh, it's a wreck. Would have to be on this day when I have something I'm supposed to be doing. I guess I'll call and just cancel it. Oh, man, look at that. That's tough right there. Oh, no. I got stuff to do. You say, Pastor Rich, we're not like that. We're not. We're not because I just acted out what I caught myself doing when I saw an accident. Do you see, we're all guilty of it. 
We don't realize how important it is that God puts a hedge of protection around us because he knows that we need it and therefore he provides it. See, we're always looking at God, give me this. Man, Brother Curtis, my hand's still empty. God, give me this. It's still empty. Maybe you don't like that. Let me try this one. God, get, right? But God said, look, he don't always do everything we ask him to do. Some things he already knows what we need, and he just does it. So my question is, if God knows what I need, and God is already doing it and providing my need for me, do I ever pause to recognize what God has done for me? Because that's part of the provision. That's part of God providing what I need. Let's move on. Number two, living with contentment, realizing that God has already provided. God, give me, give me, give me. God says, no, I'm not giving you that. But there is that one thing that you needed that I already gave you. Maybe you could recognize that it's already been given, that it's already been provided. And maybe you can be content in what you have. You know, one of the best ways to be happy in life is to want what you already have. You know, Brother Henry, I want a new pair of shoes. If I can't get that pair of shoes, Brother Greg, it's going to make me crazy. It's going to make me mad. It's going to frustrate me. It's going to drive me nuts. But how about this? You know what, Brother Henry? I want this pair of shoes. I mean, this, this exact pair. I don't want the ones at the store. I don't want the ones online. I don't want new ones. I don't want older ones. I want these. The ones that I have, those are the ones I want. You know why? You know why I want these? True story. Do you know why I want these shoes? Because when I went as a guest to preach at my father-in-law's church, I sat beside someone, I think beside someone, who noticed as I crossed my leg like this, and I looked over and realized, oh, I got a hole in my shoe. I don't need people to be seeing that I got a hole in my shoe, so I put my foot down really fast. But Miss KC, I didn't do it quite fast enough. Because I got these shoes for Christmas from somebody that I didn't know. I think it was the person who was sitting beside me when I went to church. They said, Pastor Ed, I'm gonna buy you a new pair of shoes. And I'm gonna say, okay, if you wanna buy me a new pair of shoes, go ahead and buy me a new pair of shoes. But I'm not getting rid of these shoes because I want these shoes. Because these are the ones that God gave. These are the ones that God saw when I sat down and crossed my legs, just like I typically do. God saw right there that I had a hole in my shoe. And God said, you know what? That guy sitting next to you, he's got the money to buy you a new pair of shoes. So I'm going to help him do it. I put on my shoes this morning, and oh my goodness, look right there. I mean, these shoes are starting to wear. I'm going to need to get me some new ones. That's typically how we look at things, right? Stop doing that. Please stop doing that. Start realizing that I need to be content with what God has given me. God has already seen the need, and God has met the need. He has already provided for what I needed. Why do I want something else? I want what He already has given me. Can I tell you the best way to be happy? Want what you already have, not what you can't have. This thing of provisions and things of understanding what God is doing is such an interesting topic. Thirdly, let's look at this, trusting God's faithfulness in the future. Here's the thing, Brother Brian. God already gave me one pair of shoes. He gave me a lot more than that just between me and you. But he already gave me this pair of shoes. So I got a sneaking suspicion that when it comes time for me to have another pair of shoes, 
I think I know who can get them for me. And it may be that he gives me a side job. Whoops. Push that button. Push it back. It may be that he gives me a side job and provides the money. It may be that somebody sees it and says, man, pastor needs some new shoes. I don't know. But guess what? I went looking for shoes when I got these. I'm just glad God gave them to me. I'll tell you another illustration. I've told this before. I sat in the interview at Emory, and there were people sitting around the table, and people were asking me friendly questions. I felt like it was the military, Brother Emory. There were some friendlies, and there were some enemies, and there were some people that when I looked at them, I'm like, oh, Lord, this guy does not want me to get this job. I can tell already. Uh, but I made this comment. I looked at one person, and I was told later that that person was not necessarily uh, a believer, as they call them, or they, as they call us. Um, and I looked at that person, and my answer to this question, I think, might have taken him because I said, let me just break it down to you really, really simple, okay? I wasn't looking for this job when it came to me. So if I don't get the job, I'm not going to be hurt. If God wants me to have the job, whether you like it or not, I'll have the job. Now, I want to answer any question you have, but I think the Lord gave me the opportunity since there was a smart aleck question that was asked for me to give a smart aleck answer. And that was my smart aleck answer. I wasn't looking for the job. God gave it to me. I have it. I've been there for three years now. Apparently, God wanted me to have it. When it's time and God says, you know what, I don't want you to have it anymore, guess what? He'll take it away. I'm not worried about it. I'm not job scared. I am not job scared. And neither should you. God is the one who takes care of us. You know, he's taken care of me in the past. Why wouldn't he take care of me in the future? All right, get your pens out. Let me give you some homework. You want some homework? Every week we've given you homework. I need to give you some homework. It's pretty much the points just arranged in different verbiage, but let me give it to you anyway. Number one, Practice gratitude for what God has already provided. Take some time to do what I just did this morning. I don't care what it is. It may be groceries. It may, it may be anything. I don't care what it is. But you take some time, starting today, tomorrow, throughout the week, until we gather again next week. I want you to take some time, and I want you to practice gratitude for something that God has already given to you. Surely you could come up with something. And once you come up with it, you need to be thankful for it. Number two, cultivate contentment. Cultivate contentment. Once you find that one thing, once you find out what it is that God has already given to you in the past, then I want you to learn to be content. Well, Pastor Rich, I've had this dress for 10 years. Well, maybe God wants to make it last for another five. It's still pretty, just like it was when you bought it. Just be glad God gave it to you. Learn to be content. Don't put it on and say, oh, Lord, i got to put on this ratty thing again. <laughs> People don't get close to me and they don't see, hey, you don't see that my tie is threadbare. The other day, Miss Edge looked at me and she said, hey, you think you need a new tie? And I said, nobody sees that. Nobody gets that close to me. That's true. I have tied this threadbare. It's actually my trunk tie. It has a gold bar on the back of it. It makes me feel wealthy when I wear it. <laughs> <laughs> so I hate to give it away. Give it away. But anyway, I do have one of those ties. You may know what it is. And if you do, just keep it to yourself. Because I don't want to get rid of it. Cultivate contentment. It's important. Find that thing in your life and then trust God with your future. Not only understand that God has provided in the past, not only understand that God is providing in the present, but understanding all those things that God has already given to you, God has the ability to give it to you again in the future if he chooses to do so. I'm not worried where my next meal will come from. I obviously have not missed a meal. Keep that to yourself. <laughs> 
I saw some of you about to start cackling off you. <laughs> Be thankful for God's provisions. Let's pray, shall we? Dear Jesus, we thank for today. We thank for the privilege to be here. The opportunity we have to open the scriptures.